YouTube. I am back for part two Electro Boogaloo of my massive book haul. And these are all of the books that are not romances. And I got all kinds of different stuff here. I would say mostly like sci-fi fantasy. There's some classics. There's some other stuff, but it's all basically stuff that's not romance. That's the vibe here. So on that note, let's jump into it. All of these books I have been just piling up for so long. <laughs> I'm gonna start this off here with like some books I just bought my damn self. And I'm gonna start it off in particular with The Ballad of Perilous Graves by Alex Jennings. I am very excited to read this one. I've been wanting to read it for quite some time and I just didn't get around to it. And then I had like a Barnes and Noble gift card and I was like, you know what? Today's the day. I'm at least gonna buy it so I own it. And I'm so into the story and the vibe here. It's basically in NOLA, which is kind of like, you know, a, a mythical, magical version of New Orleans. And um, basically rhythm and music and magic is what gives the city its own heartbeat. It has its own life to it. And then things are going haywire and we have perilous graves in the mix. Basically, um, there's a few songs um, from this piano that's like the heartbeat of the city that have gotten loose. And um, the city is having problems. This is a big deal. So he's like, I'm gonna save the day. I need to save the city and I love music, etc. So he's gonna go off and like try to figure out what's happening to these magical power songs that are now missing. So very into it. Um, I love New Orleans in general, and this one is just kind of taking it and making it like a fever dream. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I love all of the vibes here. So excited to read this one. And a pre-order that came in recently is A Long Stretch of Bad Days by Mindy McGinnis. I really like Mindy McGinnis in general. Her books are very dark, but very good. And this one in particular, we have these two girls, they're very different, but they're both kind of in the same situation where they're both one credit shy of graduating. Lydia, she hosts like, um, a, like a local small town radio show. And instead of just being like, you know, normal local stuff, she's like, oh, I'm gonna make this into something really cool. So I definitely get my credit and I get to go to college. But she needs something to make it spicy. Enter Bristol. She's kind of like a loud mouth, um, a uh, girl from town and they're both in the same situation so she kind of joins and they both start investigating the long stretch of bad days basically there was a week in this small little town where like a tornado hit a flood hit and there was a murder that's still unsolved to this day they're like hey let's go solve this murder we're detectives now and in doing so they stir up a lot of things that uh people don't want being stirred up there is a uh, peril here and deep dark secrets in a small town murder and um i'm into it i mean i always like mindy mcginnis in general and i know this will get dark at points but like i love her writing and i pre-ordered this i needed to have it you know what kind of on the the books i bought my damn self note um let's go for my book of the month picks that i have been just having sit around first things first i have spells for forgetting by adrian young and i've read adrian young before and i have liked her books. I haven't loved them yet, but this one is, um, I feel like it's an adult one and I've only read her YA. So I do want to see how this author handles this situation. So this one in particular is kind of really cool. So you have this woman, her name's Emery, right? Um, her life was changed forever the night her best friend was found dead and the love of her life, August Salt, was accused of murdering her. And it all takes place on this like remote island, uh, Sursa Island. And uh, there's like ancestral magic there. There's some spookiness. And I don't know if August really killed her or not, but there wasn't enough evidence or he was proven innocent or whatever. And he left because he's like, fuck all y'all bitches. Y'all thought I was a murderer. But he has to come back to the island. They start seeing each other. I don't know romantically or not, but um, yes, things go on on this island that are spooky. <laughs> so... I'm into it. I want to see where this goes. I want to see Adrienne Young write an adult novel because I've only read the YA. Another murder mystery kind of book. I have A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. And this one seems really kind of interesting. So we have this woman, right? When she was a, like a teenager, a bunch of other teenage girls went missing and never seen again. And by the end of that summer, when all those girls were going missing, her father confessed to the crimes and they put him away in prison for life. 
So, you know, there's some trauma there and, you know, time has gone by. She is now a psychologist. She's helping, you know, troubled teens and stuff. And she, she's finally kind of got her life on track. But then some girls start going missing again. And it seems kind of similar to that one summer all those years ago. Is her mind playing tricks on her? Or is there like a copycat? Or was her father never guilty? A lot of questions being asked here. But um, I'm into it. I don't know. Like, I'm just like vibing with like the moody darkness this is giving me and also i got it for free because i get like a free um add-on on my my birthday month so i got it for free anyway but um i'm like yes let's go and also oh my goodness this book is so highly anticipated for me i had it pre-ordered but then i decided to make it my book of the month so whatever it was technically pre-ordered too but this is the adventures of amina al sarafi by shannon chakraborty and Shannon Chakraborty wrote the uh, Devabod series, which is so amazing. Uh, the first book is called City of Brass. I recommend checking out that series. It's great. And this is the new series from this author. I am, I am so hyping this book up because like that series was incredible that I want to see where this one goes. And this one in particular is really cool because like aging pirates got to get the crew back together for one last job. And like the Amina Al Sarafi was like bad bitch pirate captain getting the team back together. And I'm like, oh, like, yes, I love all of that already. Like I'm coming into this book knowing I love the author's writing. And then on top of it, it's like a banger of a story idea. So yes, very excited for this one. I'm going to be reading it very shortly. Like I can't like let it sit on my shelf. So this next section is kind of all books that were given to me either by the publisher or as gifts. So let's get into those. So kind of speaking of that like whole like aging pirate captain getting the like the crew back together for one last job sent to me by the publisher I have the keeper six by Kate Elliott this one has like the same kind of vibe except it's I think it's a bit more sci-fi related but basically in the space between worlds and like certain people can walk through it for things and um this one group it's called a hex it's like six people and they get banned from the in-between for like a decade. One night, Esther, former leader of this hex, she wakes up in the middle of the night for her son, calling out to her for help, and she's gonna have to enter the in-between to get him back. So she's like, hey crew, we're doing one last thing. And like they have to get together to save this kid. And I'm like, into it. So um, yes, love that idea. Maybe I have like a new vibe I'm going for for this year. <laughs> sent to me by the publisher I have Enter the Body by Joy McCullough and this one I'm like into because it's kind of like a reimagining of Shakespeare's stories uh, in particular three women who got a raw deal and ended up dying so that's Juliet, Ophelia, and Cordelia like hey let's have them like maybe not just have be tragic figures in their stories and get killed off or die like hey let's let them like actually have their own story so it's kind of a reimagining of that those three stories kind of get interwoven with each other and um i'm into it like tell me no more i'm already excited the publisher asked me if i want it and i've said yes i do that sounds cool so here it is i'm very excited about it also sent to me by the publisher is springs arcana by lilla st crow and I think I have read something by this author before, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, this one sounds so cool. It's giving me like American Gods vibes. Um, we have this woman, her name's Natasha, right? Her mother is dying of cancer and there's only one cure and she has to go to this like skyscraper in Manhattan to get it. However, the cure from this skyscraper is from like a very hungry winter goddess. And she's like, listen, this thing I want got stolen from me, go get it. And then like, I'll like fix your mom. So she's like, ugh, fine. And so she goes off with like this like knife wielding assassin throughout like America looking for this thing to give to the goddess so the goddess can fix her mom. Whole thing like that. It's giving me a lot of American gods vibes though with the whole like road trip aspect. And this one I think is actually a little bit more of a romance as well. And I love that. So <laughs> I'm very excited to read this one. I think it's gonna be really, really good. The so last book I've gotten from the publisher recently is The Archive Undying by Emma Miko Kandon. And this one, oh, like it is so 
fucking juicy. Like, I'm really into this one. I'm so happy they sent it to me. Because, <laughs> like, I'll just read, like, this little part right here because it says a lot. When an AI dies, its city dies with it. When a city falls, it leaves a corpse behind. When that corpse runs off, only devotion can bring it back love that. In this universe, there's all these like robotic gods and one of them went mad one day and it destroyed its entire city. But then it's like, oh shit, I destroyed the city. Um, I'm going to, you know, uh, bring one of them back. That's like the only thing I can do. So he brings back his favorite one of the people, the city. So this guy, he gets like brought back to life, but then what happens? The, the AI still dies and he's just like, okay, so now I'm alone. Great. And um, he got brought back, you know, artificially, so he can't age, he can't die, he's just walking around. And then, like, things start happening in the world, and he's gonna get, like, drugged back in into this world of, like, robotic gods again. So all of this is so cool, and I love it, and I'm so excited to read that. And these last two here um, are books that have been given to me as presents. First up, I have The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornichek. I, I'm not sure on the pronunciation of that last name, so don't quote me, but that's what I think it is. So this is kind of like a um, reimagining of the myth of Loki's wife. Um, Loki had a wife in like Norse mythology and she was a witch and she, like, I know the myth is like he, he gets trapped in the, the underworld and there's like there's acid or something dripping. And, and she has to hold the bowl so it doesn't drip on him. But then when the bowl fills up, she has to move the bowl and then the acid starts dripping and he's an asshole. It's a whole thing, but I think they're giving um, her her own story, not just like this lady who stuck with Loki. Like what was her life like before then? So um, it's definitely kind of a witch story. It's North mythology. And I, I don't know, I had it on my wish list, so it was a gift for my wish list and I am excited to read it. It sounds really cool. Like I haven't really, delved much into like Norse mythology before so like I do want to read something in that like myth mythos. Also as a birthday present from one of my lovely subscribers they sent me a copy of Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. Another one that was on my wish list. I'm very excited to read this one. Um, it's kind of like um, like suffragette movement, but like witches. And also, you guys know that 90s movie, like now and then? It kind of gives me that a little bit. Like, hear me out. <laughs> so there's these four girls and their friends and they're all pledged to be like witches of like Her Majesty Royal Coven. And since that has happened, a civil war has broken out, etc. The whole witch world is kind of still recovering from this. And all four of these girls have gone their own separate directions. And then shit's going down in the witch world that's like not okay and like it's threatening the whole world. So these four friends have to come back together after all this time and like meet back up and use their skills together. So I'm into it. I love the whole like idea for this world that they built. I think it's gonna be really cool. Okay, so this last like stack here um, these are all books I got from like used bookstores or like library book sales, etc. There's like a good mix of things in the batch here. So from a library book sale, I got not one, but two Agatha Christie's and I was like, okay, nice. And I know A Pocket Full of Rye is one of the more popular ones. So I was like, okay, cool. I got like a little copy. And then I got Hercule Poirot's Christmas. And I was like, he has a Christmas story? And I was very excited about it. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm gonna read this at Christmas. I'm very happy. So this is uh, previously titled A Holiday for Murder and Murder for Christmas. So I think it's like two novellas in one book, but I was like, yes. Yes, I want a murdery Christmas. <laughs> but while this one is, you know, Hercule Poirot, this one is Miss Marple. So it's two different detectives. So um, I haven't really read anything with Miss Marple yet, but I have read Hercule Poirot. But um, I got these at a library book sale and it was part of a three for a dollar sale. So I got this other one as part of the group, which is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, because I actually have never read it and I didn't own it, but now I have a copy. It is kind of beat to shit if I'm being honest, but whatever, it was like 33 cents. <laughs> and I mean, it's been out for a minute. Everyone kind of knows what it's about, but basically it's the heartbreaking story of a talented young woman who descends into madness. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get this because I have been wanting 
to bring back drunk classics. If I feel like the series is kind of having a bit of a renaissance right now. People are getting into it and I was like, I should do more drunk classics because I always enjoy them. So be aware, I think I'm gonna bring back drunk classics this year. It, it will finally be back. <laughs> so moving on over to like used bookstore stuff. I got a copy of Salem's Lot by Stephen King. Um, I mainly, I just really wanna read it. Um, I've read a little bit of Stephen King, not a ton, but I've wanted to read Salem's Lot in particular because it's vampires. And I was like, yeah, I want to see Stephen King do vampires. I think that would be interesting. And it's like pretty thick. Like how much is this? Oh God. I think it's like, uh, like, I mean, it's kind of long. It's 631 pages, but in a mass market. So it, in a, like a full size book, it'd probably be shorter. So I think I'm just like concerned for no reason, but, um, yeah. Very excited for this one. I do want to kind of see what Stephen King does with Salem's Lot. And I also got this copy of Alien Into Charybdis by Alex White. And I love Alex White as an author. They wrote the Salvager series, which I highly recommend. It's one of my faves. The first book of that is A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe check it out it's amazing and then i knew alex white wrote a bunch of stuff for like the alien series and i was like i i never really went out of my way to get it but then i found it at the used bookstore and i was like okay i'm into this yes because i love horror movies like i love horror movies i've seen all the alien movies i've seen all the predator movies so i was like yes let's let's get into this i like this author i like the alien franchise I'm combining them. Why Why was I so weird about not wanting to read the series? <laughs> I finally got this one. I'm pretty excited about it. It seems like it's gonna be really cool, especially because I trust this author to do a great job. Another wild used bookstore find was The Girl Who Could Move Shit With Her Mind by Jackson Ford. I will admit this is a title buy because what does that mean? That seems fun. <laughs> and then in the blurb on the front, it says like alias meets X-Men. And I don't know about any of you guys, but like I loved Alias, that show from the early 2000s. I was obsessed with it back in the day. It was one of my favorite things. So I was like, oh, Alias, yes, please. <laughs> so basically it's about this girl, Tegan Frost, and then um, she's telekinetic and the government uses that to their abilities and they send her out on like missions that normal people can't do until like one person winds up dead at the site of her last mission and it's like killed in a way that only she could have done she's like i don't i didn't kill this person i gotta clear my name and um i'm into it <laughs> i just like the title a lot so i'm thinking if that humor carries on into the book it should be fun and last up this was a total find i got in the used bookstore which was the daughter of dr moreau by sylvia moreno garcia like i wasn't super vibing with like this book in general like i love sylvia moreno garcia but like this one i was like eh, i don't know about dr moreau like, uh, about it but i was like well if it's four dollars at the used bookstore like i'm gonna get it <laughs> so it's basically you know the island of dr moreau except we're following the daughter of this doctor but it's also set in like um 1800s era mexico so I like all the vibes here. It's just like, I don't know. I just wasn't connecting to it, but like for four bucks at the used bookstore, I'm connecting to it a lot. So that was kind of the deciding factor. Like I didn't want to pay $28 for it full price, but I will pay $4 for it. Cause um, I like the author, but I wasn't super into this book in particular from this author. All right, so that was like a fair amount of books. I think it was like 18 books. I just hauled and like less sitting on my shelf for like months at a time. So now is the day they're getting filmed finally. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Um, what's a book from an author that you weren't super interested in even though you like the author? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. Also, if you want cool exclusive content, including early access to videos and a book club, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. Links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.